Hello everyone, this is Dr. Viet Le from the Academy of Online Radiology Education. I work at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Hi, I'm Dr. Marie Helen Gagnon from the Academy of Online Radiology Education. I work for Mallinckrodt Institute of Radiology in St. Louis. I would like to thank our senior editors for their contributions to this month's pediatric radiology blog. Dr. Paul Gillerman from Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, Texas, and Dr. Alex Tobin from Cincinnati Children's. We are so excited to share the current literature in pediatric radiology with you. Evaluating changes in diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound for appendicitis. Does practice make perfect? This is a retrospective study that evaluates the changes in the diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound for appendicitis over time. The diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound for appendicitis improved significantly over five years. However, it only reached 31.5% from 13.9%. The reported accuracy could be further improved if this study had classified non-visualized or partially visualized appendices as normal rather than equivocal. Abdominal lymph node size in children at computed tomography. This is a retrospective study which measured abdominal and pelvic lymph node size in children and provides normative data references. This study provided short and long axis measurements in both the axial and coronal planes. Axial short axis measurements likely represent a better reference option than the other combinations. Accurately distinguishing pediatric ileocolic intussusception from small bowel intussusception using ultrasonography. This is a retrospective study which demonstrates that ultrasound can distinguish between ileocolic and small bowel intussusception using multiple imaging features on ultrasound. They found that the normal ultrasound appearance of the ileocolic region, as well as a normal appearing ascending colon, is the best finding to differentiate between the two types of intussusception. Coronavirus Disease 2019, COVID-19 in Children, a Systematic Review of Imaging Findings. This is a systematic review of four databases, including Medline, Embase, Cochrane, and Google Scholar, to describe the imaging findings in pediatric patients with COVID-19. Normal chest CTs were initially seen in 34% of patients. The most common distribution of abnormal findings was lower lobe and unilateral. The most common pattern was ground glass opacities. A major limitation was that the study included patients from only China, South Korea, and Iran. E-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury in the pediatric population. Imaging features at presentation and short-term follow-up. This was a retrospective review which looked at common CT imaging findings of e-cigarette or vaping product associated lung injury, also known as Ovali. This found that common imaging findings of Ovali included ground glass opacities, interlobular septal line thickening, and crazy paving patterns, usually with subpleural sparing and lymphadenopathy. These findings mostly resolved on short-term follow-up. Validating 3D indexes in the non-surgical pectus excavatum patient. This is a prospective cross-sectional study that determined the accuracy and reliability of measures obtained by a portable 3D scanner in patients with pectus excavatum of different severity grades compared to traditional imaging with MRI. The study found statistically significant correlation between the portable 3D scanner for Haller index and correction index, regardless of severity. The ease of accessibility and short scanning duration for 3D surface scanning are favorable features. But the major disadvantage of 3D surface scanning compared to MRI is the inability to assess cardiac function. Microbiology and radiographic features of osteomyelitis in children and adolescents with sickle cell disease. This is a retrospective study which assessed the diagnostic probability of diagnosing osteomyelitis in children with sickle cell anemia based on imaging findings. Of only 22% of the patients with positive cultures, either blood cultures or operative specimens, were found to have MRI findings deemed definitive for osteomyelitis. 
Utility of Ultrasound for Evaluating Masses in the Pediatric Population This retrospective study looks at the accuracy of ultrasound in evaluating pediatric musculoskeletal soft tissue masses and the frequency of subsequent additional imaging and interventions. The authors show that most pediatric soft tissue masses that present on ultrasound are benign and relatively few underwent additional imaging. The intervention rates of probably benign and indeterminate masses were similar, yet there was no documentation of malignancy for any of the probably benign masses. This suggests that clinical and imaging surveillance, rather than surgical intervention, may be acceptable for probably benign masses. Automatic machine learning to differentiate pediatric posterior fossa tumors on routine MR imaging. This is a retrospective study that evaluates how an automatic model of machine learning, TPOT, compares to a human-selected model and to expert neuroradiologists when differentiating pediatric posterior fossa tumors of medulloblastoma, ependymoma, and pilocytic astrocytoma. TPOT performs similarly well to a machine learning model based on manual optimization by a human machine learning expert. Both of these were superior to expert human radiologists. Trends in use of advanced imaging in pediatric emergency departments, 2009 to 2018. This was a cross-sectional study of 52 tertiary care children's hospitals in the United States. They assessed how the use of CT, MR, and ultrasound during pediatric emergency room visits changed over 10 years. The overall trend showed an increased use of these advanced imaging modalities. However, CT use decreased and the use of non-ionizing imaging modalities such as MR and ultrasound increased. Thanks so much for listening. For more details, please visit our blog where you can also find the links to the original publications. Feel free to share your thoughts and questions on the Pediatric Radiology Forum. See you next month.